to, you talked about embolization and thorough embolization. Can you talk a little bit about your technique? You know, you're going from the, the right IJ access. Just talk through, are you coiling, packing the coils uh, in layers? You know, the, the way I learned it was three different layers, putting uh, some sclerosin agent in between. Can you talk about your technique and has that evolved over time? Yeah, no, it has evolved over time. When I started to do these procedures, I did some in training and then I did some after training and I was using only coils and I was only embolizing the left ovarian vein. And now it's evolved to being what I just described. What I think is a very good, inexpensive and effective way to do this utilizes a longer sheath and a balloon occlusion tool. So is there a variety of balloon occlusion over the wire options that exist, but I don't think you need anything tremendously sophisticated. And so standard, put a long sheath in, do a standard left renal vein venogram with whatever catheter you think works best for you, and then do a angiographic catheter venogram of the left ovarian vein. And then I think advancing the sheath into the ovarian vein and exchanging for a balloon catheter and doing balloon occlusion venography gives a lot of benefits. First off, it gives you the ability to really appreciate the extent of the pelvic venous reservoir. You know, when you close off the flow and inject contrast in, you can fill the reservoir. In fact, what we do when we do that is we calculate the volume of the reservoir until we see spillage into either the iliac veins or the other ovarian vein. And that gives us an idea of how big the reservoir that you can fill from that ovarian vein is. And then it provides you with safety as you inject sclerosins. And we use a combination of either liquid sclerosant and contrast or liquid sclerosant, contrast, and in a foam version to opac- or to sclerose the pelvic venous reservoir using the volume of drug calculated or estimated from the estimated volume of the reservoir from the venogram. And then leaving the balloon up while the drug is in the pelvic venous reservoir for some length of time and we arbitrarily say five minutes and actually try to adhere to that because it's very easy that five minutes seems like it goes quite fast, but it doesn't. It takes time to let the drug go in is really good. You could already be pushing coils through your balloon catheter. And what that does is not only increases the efficacy of the contact time of the drug with the veins, which we know makes a difference, but it also makes your coil deployment safer because there's no way your coils are going to migrate because you have a balloon above them. And then bring the balloon up a little higher and inject again. There are often parallel trunks. Usually the trunks end at about the top of the sacral ala, but there are some patients that have parallel ovarian trunks that are higher than that. And if you see them, depending on how big they are, you might actually dive into them and selectively balloon occlude those and sclerose those, or you might just put some coils in the origin, or if they're small, sclerose them from above with the balloon inflated again, above the coil pack that you have below and into the other parallel vein, and then put another coil pack in. And I think a coil pack every other vertebral body is a a reasonable way to look at this, particularly from a cost point of view. I think the full metal jacket is overkill and may, if there is a signal to the fact that some coils can cause pain if they're poking through the side of the vein wall into the perivenous area, we mitigate against that. Keep in mind that these Ovarian veins are very thin. You know, if you look at them in the operating room and see one with coils in it, you can see the coils inside the vein when you look at the vein from the outside. Same thing with the cava. The cava is a very thin structure too. And so it's not unreasonable to consider that pain can come from coils protruding through the through the side of the, the vein. So keep that in mind as you pack your coils. And then I think don't get too cute. Don't put coils too close to the renal vein and run the risk of either having the coil protrude into the renal vein or embolize to the systemic circulation, give yourself a little bit of sort of room at the top to not make a mistake. And again, the balloon occlusion catheter is helpful here. You know, reinflate the balloon occlusion catheter and then deploy your coils and then take the balloon down and use the lumen of the balloon to do your completion venogram to see if you're done and then you're done. There's been a, and I've done this before too, plugs are are very appealing for this thing to occlude the left ovarian vein. We're the right ovarian vein, but there is an anecdotal case being described where an amplatzer plug caused obstruction of the left ureter. And when you see them on scans, it's not crazy to think that that could happen. So keep that in mind with plugs and certainly with coil packs as well as, you know, I don't think it's probably a very common occurrence, but it's just something to think about. 
And then the same logic on the other side, you know, maybe the one nuance here is what to do with the ovarian vein that wasn't refluxing, but fills varicosities in the pelvic venous reservoir when you do balloon occlusion venography on the right ovarian vein. And I think for sure you should do sclerosant with the balloon inflated on the other side as well. The coils, whether they help or not at that point is, is hard to know, but probably coiling the right ovarian vein on the way out is also good at this point in terms of until we know better is probably good practice. And then finally, doing balloon occlusion venography of the internal iliac veins to see if any varices are filling. You know, I think the more complete your balloon occlusion sclerotherapy is from the ovarian veins, the less varicosities you're going to see from the internal iliac venograms, which are balloon occlusion filling reservoir varicosities. If you're less complete, you're going to see more. And if you're more complete, you may only see a little bit or more often our experiences, we usually don't see anything there. Coils, I think, maybe as a caution. Certainly in the main internal iliac vein trunk, veins are very distensible in different positions, different physiologic conditions like Valsalva. And coil and plug migration from the internal iliac circulation is much, much higher than it is from the ovarian vein circulation. I think in selected cases who have both venous origin chronic pelvic pain and have lower extremity varicose veins of pelvic origin, getting into the second or third order branches of the internal iliac vein and sclerosing and then putting coils in those veins to try to treat those escape points is reasonable. Just make sure you're packing your coils in a way that they're not going to migrate.